and this week um, would have been the type of weeks where we see a lot of projects um, get pitched on the Quasette, um, where sales for international companies put out these titles and um, and uh, pitch up tent on many projects. Some of them never get made, but um, in the case of George Miller, Ken's 2015, if I stand corrected, you can correct me on this, Kevin, um, was a big year for him. It was a big relaunch year for him. Obviously, I'm talking about uh, Fury Road. Uh, this week, we have the cool New York Times article, which delved more into the production highs and woes of that film. But we also had back-to-back -back, uh, pieces on two productions, um, one that was sort of delayed, but one that comes out from the the hat with the with the, the rabbit and whatnot, the magician's hat. Um, so before talking about the project that sort of had, was delayed, let's talk about uh, the legacy of Mad Max. Sure, I mean, um, it was like a bolt of lightning. I think as what's remarkable, what's remarkable about the New York Times piece is I think everyone knew at the time how difficult that production was. But uh, the New York Times piece really, I mean, one of the revelations for me is that George Miller essentially went into edit editing without the beginning or end of the film. Uh, and it was only when the new studio chief came in uh, that he was allowed to go back and shoot and do, I think, three more weeks of shooting to get um, all, all the stuff in the Citadel, which sort of frames the whole movie. So it, it, it sort of reinforces what a little bit of a miracle that movie is um, in terms of studio blockbusters. It's something special and unique that has a real message, but also is just still a phenomenal piece of just visceral filmmaking. It's, there's really nothing else like it. So yeah, so on that, he's able to get that confidence to then return to this world get the money that he needs to make uh i don't want to say a smaller version but more uh more pronounced character study on the character that uh, charlie Theron had played yeah so where he's he's spoken about this over the past few years about how he wanted to do a movie centered around furiosa and now it looks like he's pivoting towards um a prequel um but before he gets there, the first thing on his plate is um, 3,000 Years of Longing, uh, the project, which also has been kicking around for a little bit, but has um, Idris Elba and uh, uh, Tilda Swinton attached to star. So yeah, so that project um, will begin shooting potentially fairly soon in Australia, where the conditions are somewhat more favorable to I guess social distancing and and, and being on a, a perhaps a smaller set I'm not sure what the scope is for this um, but the production will take place there and it's supposedly supposed to go to London and Istanbul so we'll see how that pans out it's not obvious for to have a production go from one country to another let alone on one continent a continent to another um, but yeah, not much is known about this, but MGM is uh, willing to throw in what, what could be some considerable money. Yeah, it'll be, again, he, George Miller has been playing it pretty cagey about what the film is. He wants to sort of want audiences to experience it fresh. Um, but around the time of Fury Road, um, when that film was out and he was doing press, he mentioned a couple of things which might inform this film. One is that he said, he wanted to make a film that was contemporary in setting and had a smaller scale that wasn't as involved uh, as something on the scale of Fury Road. And another thing he said was that he really admired Tangerine, actually the film um, by Sean Baker. Uh, and he was, he was inspired to do something on that sort of like intimate, intimate level. So it'll be interesting to see if five years on, um, that's still the, the mindset he has for this film. Hi, I'm Eric Lavallee. I'm editor-in-chief and site owner for IonCinema.com. And this is... Kevin Jaggernaut, contributing writer for The Playlist. And together we are Indie Sponge.